What's up, all you beautiful people? Thanks for joining us on Uncommon Convos. Today, our special guest is the multi-talented actor, producer, director, writer, you name it, he does it, Denzel Whitaker. Now, you may know him from his lead role alongside Denzel Washington and Forrest Whitaker in the movie The Great Debaters. And again, with Denzel Washington in Training Day. as well as Warrior with Tom Hardy, Abduction, The Purge TV series, plus a little movie called Black Panther. Not to mention his latest project, You Shoot Videos, which was nominated for Best Feature at the Tribeca Film Festival, but also won the Tribeca X Award. And a soon to be released movie directed by Riza Wu-Tang called Cutthroat City, and that's just to name a few. Now, as a bonus for any of you 90s babies out there, if you remember that TV show, All That, on Nickelodeon, well, Tenzel is on that too. Now, don't forget to be awesome by subscribing and giving us a thumbs up. Plus, click that notification bell, that way you know when a new episode comes out. Also, leave us a comment so we can hear your thoughts on things. Uh, we'll also be doing a live broadcast here in the near future, that way you guys can like join in and ask us questions. So let's go. It's like everyone has their own little workout channel too on YouTube. <laughs> Pretty Everyone's much everybody's like, yeah, throwing it in their stories. They're yeah, showing right? like what their workout routine is. Instagram, just go to any Instagram. Oh yeah, somebody working out. Everybody's gonna become a personal trainer after this is. Oh, all definitely. Over. Yeah, Every, yeah. Giving everyone tips. And the market's gonna. It's be either a personal right. trainer or you become a barber after this is all over. Dude, <laughs> speaking of barber, Both. bang! Oh yeah, you're gonna make bang! Oh my god, I just had to shave the other day. I told myself during this whole quarantine, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna let it grow out the facial hair. I've never grown a full beard. Let me just see what happens. <laughs> a couple weeks later, I just have patches all over, and I'm like, well, this is clearly none of this is connecting. This is not so let's just, yeah, let's just get rid of it at this point. <laughs> this is done. <laughs> what, are you, what are you drinking, Dun? Mm. Like Thai tea. So this is an immunity smoothie, I guess you could say. It's got lime ginger grapefruit oranges a little bit of celery stock some turmeric and what else is in this Dang. i think what's almost it but yeah it's like it's packed with vitamins everything it's 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 the wow. jam nice. delicious that's awesome a little post-workout shake yeah <laughs> i forgot about the coffee now <laughs> yeah so we, we hop on and i go man i really could use some iced coffee right now and i don't have any and Michael's like, oh, hold on. <laughs> well, that, oh, <laughs> good idea. <laughs> Gets up, goes yeah. to the fridge, yeah. comes back with an iced coffee ass. These, these just make it way too convenient. These Costco cold brew coffees, like, oh, yeah. Make yeah. it so easy. Just some ice and a straw. And I feel like I just went to Starbucks. That, that's what Costco oh. does literally for everything. The Pretty problem much. Is yeah. You need a warehouse <laughs> just to store what you buy from Costco. No joke. Yeah. Yeah. Right? A spare room. Oh, for sure. Sure. Mm -hmm. Pretty much sure. a spare room. You can't do a spare closet. It's got to be a spare room. <laughs> it floods out of the closet. Buy, yeah. <laughs> Rent a two bedroom. Somewhere to put pallets. Just for, <laughs> just, for, just for stock. <laughs> you need enough exactly. square footage for a couple pallets. <laughs> I'll try kids. Oh, that's so true. I'm drinking that's film funny. whiskey instead. I'm drinking oh, whiskey. Man. I didn't have any iced tea. Film whiskey. Oh, oh, I thought I mean iced tea. <laughs> Just some iced tea. <laughs> some fizz. Yeah, yeah, I, I could really use some coffee, though. It looks sophisticated. You look like you're drinking coffee. Yeah, well, there you go. That works. Yeah. Looks, no. Yeah. 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 It's it's sophisticated in my version. You got to stick the pinky out. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> do the proper way. <clears throat> proper. It's so proper. My grandma used to do that. My grandma would, uh, she would come visit us. Um, she was super proper. And she would eat pizza and she would mm -hmm. sit down and she'd sit straight up and she'd put her little napkin in, in her thing and then she would take her fork and her knife and she would and then she would switch hands, put the knife down, switch hands again, pick the piece up, oh eat my it, God. take her napkin, pat yeah. it and go, I'm stuffed. I'm like, <laughs> Grandma, you ate the corner of a pizza, like the front tip of a pizza. Yeah. What are you talking about? You're stuffed. And who eats and where's the your pizza? Grandma with from? Uh, Where, where's your family from? 
they're Apparently originally London. Yeah, they're oh, well. Okay, my yeah, great grandparents are originally from England. Then they moved to Canada. So my grandpa's mm-hmm. from Canada, and then they migrated down to America. Makes total sense. But yeah, man. the Groveners yeah. are from England. He's actually so, the the Groveners, the Duke of Westminster, right now. Okay. I don't know him. Gotcha. I can't call him. He yeah, yeah. Pick yeah. up my, <laughs> 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 pick up my phone. Call. <laughs> Gotta trace that family history. Where's but, my paper? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Where, where's my room key? I don't know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So but yeah, they're from there, Brits. man. Brits are the only ones that I know that eat pizza with like a fork and knife, like mm-hmm. a diet. Yeah. Heart. Growing eat up, I uh, it's true. It's very we true. Ate, I ate uh, pork and beans with all my breakfast like eggs and, and hash and stuff, I would eat pork and beans with it. And I thought that was normal until I started dating people, like my girlfriend, that she's like, what the hell are you doing putting beans on it? Like, Isn't this how you eat breakfast? Yeah. And then I found out years later after doing research- That, that you're wrong. Yeah, that, that you're wrong. That that's how, <laughs> <laughs> that it's completely the wrong way to eat breakfast. <laughs> now that the, that's how British people eat breakfast, they put beans on it. And right. I got that. I guess my grandpa used to do that. So my dad did that. So I did it. I didn't know. It's so funny. Literally the sentence when I was young, I had pork and beans and had that just yeah. totally told me a lot about you. Out of the time I've known, <laughs> right. that yeah. one sentence alone. Yeah. Pork, beans, and hash. That's the stuff. I love yeah. it. I'll go to a restaurant and order, order hash and I ask them if they have beans. They don't have it, but. I can do hash, yeah. That's the it all makes stuff, sense man. now. <laughs> Denzel's like, I get you. I get you. I get you. <laughs> that, that summed it up pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, what you been up to, Rue? You trying to not go crazy while you're quarantined? Uh, I'm not going to lie with you. Craziness hasn't really set in yet. It, yeah. it has it. Yeah, no, I was, I was talking about, to my buddy about this the other day. Like, I'm an introverted heart. So, mm-hmm. prior to quarantine, you would never catch me on the streets anyway. I'm at my house. <laughs> so, oh, so, when, so when all of this lockdown was happening, this craziness, I was like, all right, well, let me just go buy some groceries. And here I am, you know, back in the house. I'm with, <laughs> I'm with my parents right now. Uh, and thankfully, I've had some projects that I've needed to catch up on. Right now, they're starting to kind of slow up. Mm-hmm. But like beforehand, like last week, I was, we kind of talked about this. I was editing. And it was just nonstop editing for maybe about a week and a half. So mm-hmm. that's where my focus was. I, I didn't even know what was going on in the world, to be honest right. with you. Right. Yeah, because yeah, when we were, when we were, when we were uh, communicating back and forth, uh, yeah, you had that hiatus that you took. And mm-hmm. I was in the same boat. I was I'm sitting here editing a project right now. And you were like, sorry, dude, I had to take time from social media. I was like, I get it, because you got to focus yeah. on exactly. whatever project you're working on. Mm-hmm. Exactly, exactly. So I can't say the craziness, thankfully, hasn't set in. I've been in really good spirits. <laughs> and, uh, you know, my parents, I'm, I'm with them right now. They got like a, a built in gym. You know, oh, it's nice. this little kind of like, oh, it's in the I... South Bay area of Los huh. Angeles. So okay. the actual, uh, how would you say? The landscape of where the houses are kind of spread out out here. So huh. at least I got oh, like nice. some room to roam when I walk outside. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know. It's been nice. Nice. Yeah. I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't say I've been mad at quarantine. I was like, you know, I'd be I'd be more mad if I didn't get what I had on my to do list done before quarantine let up. Like That's I, I kind of made like a to do list for quarantine, and you know, I was talking to my buddy about this the other day, and I was like, damn. I'm kind of glad they extended it. I got some shit that I need to do. <laughs> I'm in the same boat. That list is starting to stress me out. <laughs> yeah. Like, right? Yeah. yeah. That's like well, because you, like you, you have no excuses. Yeah, because you have no excuses either. It's like you're quarantined. Mm-hmm. What else did you have to do? Like, why didn't you get it done? Exactly. Yeah. 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 Exactly. The last Absolutely. thing I want to do is come out of quarantine and been like, well, I put on some pounds. <laughs> you know, I've seen some shows. <laughs> It was cool. (laughs) I made it. Yeah, exactly. That's the last statement I want. (laughs) Have you Uh, had any um, guys? uh, Pretty much the same. Like, Mm -hmm. like exactly like you said. It's um, the you have all these things. Well, since I have all this time, these are things I want to accomplish. And now it's kind of all this self pressure on on myself to try to get these things done to take that time. Mm -hmm. Have you had any um, crazy realizations during this time that you wouldn't have had otherwise? Um, Crazy realizations internally or or externally? How would you say? Either. Okay. 
That's a loaded question. Let it begin. Uh, let's see. Crazy internalization. I definitely noticed even more how fragile uh, our industry is, the entertainment industry. Oh. Uh, you know, I've always sort of, because I've spent about 20 years within the entertainment industry at this point, right? Mm. And so I've seen it from childhood up until me transitioning into adulthood. And definitely when I made that transition into adulthood, it was one of those um, blinding factors for myself that uh, being an actor, I'm kind of at the whim of the studios. So that's why I've taken it upon myself to sort of jump behind the camera to sort of be as ambitious um, and as entrepreneurial as I could. Mm. Now I'm looking at the scope of how this pandemic has broke out and now, you know, like AMC is thinking about closing and, you know, yep. Hollywood is talking about how they're ever going to bounce back and the distribution model is changing. Well, that means that industry really is just as fragile as almost an actor's career. So everybody's kind of in this scramble um, uh, to try to figure out like where their next job is going to come from. So yep. I guess that coin is sort of two-sided because the realization comes as like this. If you're already an independent artist, if you're already a freelance artist, you should know how to survive these times. Because there's definitely been times with where in the year, like just last year alone, I didn't work for the first half of the year. Then the second half of the year was, was boom. You know what I mean? And that happens within our careers. So you should definitely know how to, how to, um, ride the tides i should say you know what i mean mm -hmm. like this this time should be pretty normal to you um but outside of that i've also realized on sort of a macro scale kind of just how the world i've always had this theory about the world but now this is more <laughs> evident than ever where it's like you know people work kind of a nine to five you hear like gary v talking about people working a nine to five or whatnot like they go to work they do their thing they clock in they come home they have their routine they sit down they watch tv that's it and it's just the full spectrum over and over again. And I think right now in quarantine, you're starting to see a lot of people actually sit down and deal with their inner conscious, sit down and deal with themselves and their silence and solitude. And a lot of people don't know what the fuck to do. <laughs> they're, they're scrambling. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and in an in a age where we have so much technology and, and so many things to distract us, you know, it's not like the olden days where we just had candle and a book you know what i mean like there's so much distracting us all the time i think finally people are sitting down and, and realizing what's the meaning of life you know mm. what i mean so for sure i can't quite say that's been as much of an internal realization i think as an actor especially when you go through moments of not working in depression you're like well, fuck i've been here before <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. but, <laughs> but the world collectively i think we're starting to uh have that moment and hopefully mm. i'm hoping is that there will be a greater appreciation for each other, a greater appreciation for the collective consciousness, you know, raising the energy and the spirits and putting out, you know, wonderful things that we want to see. And then hopefully we'll take a greater appreciation for the way the earth is shaping up because the earth is doing just fine without us out in society right now. Yeah. It's actually doing better. It's doing better, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's good medicine. <laughs> <clears throat> right, and, exactly. and like you so said, as, as an actor going in between jobs or being in between jobs, it could be stressful um, as, as, as uh, independent um, artist. Uh, but at least now, nobody's working. <laughs> I think it's harder <laughs> before because <laughs> you're, you're sitting there in between jobs and you're seeing everybody else work and you're like, wait, everybody else is working. I'm not booking, you know. So now right. nobody's working. Yeah. It's a little bit easier to take that medicine. Yeah, for, yeah, exactly. For some reason, I'm sitting oh, over absolutely. here. Yeah, for some reason, I'm sitting over here like Mr. Joy giving out, you know, uh, <laughs> advice to some of my friends in other industries. And they're like, but I don't know what I'm going to do. Bro, I never know what I'm going to do. That's <laughs> yes. the point. Yep. Get up in the morning and create. Do That's the grind. That's the hustle. That's right. Yep. That's right. <clears throat> yep. Like the so only true. thing we have right now in our power, because you take the finances away, you know, you take the job structure away. The only thing you have right now is to create and to reinvent yourself, you know what I mean? So you pick up a new skill, you know, learn a new trade. Like this is the time where we should all be in a, I don't know if you guys are Dragon Ball Z fans, but we should be in a, a hyperbolic time chamber. We should be in there working out, you know what I mean? Like getting it in. Yeah. Got the DBZ yeah, yeah. tattoo, bro. Oh, do you? Yeah. Oh, okay. He's DBZ fan. 
<laughs> you know, that's what's up. So yeah, we're all in a hyperbolic there time chamber right now. You like go. you should be trying to be the best version of yourself coming out of this. You yeah. know, definitely yeah. exercising Absolutely. that mind, body, and soul. And that, yep, exactly. that's Super Saiyan three and four. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. Got, got that. <laughs> hey, do, do you guys do you guys feel? Um, I still, for some reason, this might just be me personally. I wake up in the morning and I still have anxiety. Like I gotta get this done. I have to do. I'm like, well, I'm not getting something oh, yeah. done. Okay. You mean yeah. anxiety of, of yeah. previous responsibilities before this? Uh, just in in general, like, okay, I, I am working on projects right now. I, you know, so I know I have to get those done. There's a timeline. I have a deadline to to hit. So I have the anxiety about that. But I also, for some reason, have anxiety about waking up and I have to. I don't know. Like, oh, I need to go do this, or I have to. Something has to get. Yeah, I have yeah. anxiety. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't know. It's oh, weird. yeah. I, I, I think, get I get that. Yeah. I mean, you know, For sure. that just goes to show kind of like your individual personalities and, and I guess our collective individual personalities. Like, it seems like we're all self starters here. You know what yeah. I mean? And yeah. you hold yourself accountable. So mm-hmm. I definitely wake up in the morning like, oh, man, what do I need to get done? Because, again, you've had to be your own motivator for so long. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Once again, as an independent artist, like you have to be your own uh, battery pack because otherwise nobody's going to do it for you. Right. You know? Yeah. yeah. Yep. It's that funny, though, on the on the other side of that coin, the anxiety I feel is very similar to what you're talking about. Denzel was like all the things I want to get done before this is over. Mm-hmm. And I have a a bunch of projects like if i could turn my camera i can't right now but like literally this looks like a madhouse of ideas and the projects that i'm trying to get done before this but yeah. the realization that i got regardless of time is how i'm i still even i'm i'm still not moving forward as fast as i'd like to on these not because of all the excuses i had before this happened i always said well because i'm working i don't have enough time i can't do it because of this or i can't do it because of that now that all those excuses have been eliminated Mm-hmm. I realized those excuses were completely irrelevant. I have all the time in the world right now and I still can't do them. So obviously the problem is here. It's never been on those ex- external things. So the realization to that has been extremely powerful for me. But like oh, wow. you were saying, yeah, Nick, yeah. it does follow uh, up with a lot of anxiety as, yeah. as well. But mm-hmm. I guess that's a good anxiety because it's it's kind of putting yourself to the test in that hyperbolic chamber, you know, mm-hmm. um, just working your butt off and trying to get stronger mentally and creatively. Here, mm-hmm. here's a realization the <laughs> amount of time you sit in los angeles traffic when you <laughs> using that time for something else oh my it's god that, exactly that's a realization <laughs> i always always found myself before quarantine and again this is no excuse i feel like you michael where it's like i had all these excuses before and they're still <laughs> internal i was like man i spend all this time driving and i never get time to work out well, I haven't really found much time to work out still, but I'm getting better at it. <laughs> get better. But I did find that like Los Angeles traffic, you give or take three, four hours of your life, maybe just sitting on the road. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And what do you make? What do you make good use of that time? You know, or how do you make good use of that time? Because a Very lot of true. that, the only thing you could really do is throw on like a informative podcast or maybe take some phone calls. I call my whip mm-hmm. the mobile office because I'm always yep. taking calls. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. yeah, that's what I did. Like, you know, that's that's real. a time device that maybe we could figure out how to be a little bit more efficient. Mm-hmm. I wonder yeah. if we're going to come out of quarantine and if we're going to jump back to safer so meeting up at places or are we going to find a way to like continue to do this i was just thinking continue that meet, you know don't what i mean know. Mm-hmm. we don't know I, I, I wonder what that new normal is <laughs> because right now the la traffic is is slim to none so it's people amazing. are saying that an hour to two yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's so good right now <laughs> it's the only, amazing the only good thing to come out of the coronavirus is la traffic um <laughs> yeah, they right. say that they say that like a two hour a normal two hour hour drive somewhere like to lax or whatever is like 20 minutes now 15 minutes oh yeah um, easily so it's gonna be interesting to see what happens after the stay home is is let up is it just gonna go right back to boom traffic or what, what's gonna happen okay, uh, oh man that first month madness mm-hmm. yeah that's what i yeah. think especially with everybody being trapped indoors right now they're all gonna be trying to go out probably more they're than in- more than usual yeah exactly for anybody who's like an extrovert 
they're uh-huh. like screaming inside right now. Oh like yeah, buddy. He, oh yeah. He lives in New York, uh, and I've always known him to be like a people person. Like uh-huh. that's his gift. He he loves socializing with people. Uh-huh. He is anxiety ridden right now. He just wants <laughs> to get out. He wants to see people. He's bouncing off of his walls, you know. It's like punishment for him. (laughs) Yeah. So like, he would be a guy who wants to go out and and I envision this, like everybody's gonna wanna go out. They're gonna wanna have pool parties, underground parties, clubs. Dude, I was reading an article the other day that in San Francisco, they just busted an illegal nightclub. (laughs) 50 people gathering together during quarantine. (laughs) Yep. Like, and I live on nightclub. It's like some moonshining days, bootlegging. So days. <laughs> like, but why are no... we having a nightclub in quarantine? Uh, what necessity are you getting out of right, that right yep. now? Yeah. Seriously, what addiction are you feeding that you have to to the urge a nightclub? Yeah, footloose all over again. <laughs> I just got to dance. I just got to dance. I know. <laughs> Right, 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 right. What, what, what was it in the news I saw? Like a mayor, uh, there was a mayor, I think, or a governor that um, he did the stay at home and he started enforcing it. So he had the sheriff and the police go to different businesses and basically raid them. And they went to a bar slash nightclub and they basically went in there, raided it and found a bunch of people there. And the mayor's wife was there. <laughs> oh. <Wow. laughs> Yep. Wow. Yep. And to his credit, he did say, he, well, at least he made a statement. He said that she's going to face the same cons- consequences as everybody oh. else that was there. Wow. I wonder if that was like a setup. I wonder if he knew and this was his way of busting her. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mayor. Your know. wife belongs to the streets. Uh, yeah, right? <laughs> right. Oh, man. Oh, boy. Oh, that was funny. <laughs> That's, That's the best terrible. way to confront her on this topic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I can't remember where that was, though, but that was funny. No, the, the headlines have been insane. I had never thought, you know, our generation or the generation underneath us or even above us would be going through something like this. This is the kind of stuff you see in movies, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> it is. And then when you think about it, like, you know, I was reading the statistics about what was it, the uh, Spanish flu? uh yeah. when that last yeah. happened was it the swine flu or spanish flu one of the two uh, i mean those, those, yes i think it was the spanish yeah. flu the bubonic plague the, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the spanish flu that that took place in the early 1900s though you know and, and yeah. you gotta yeah. think like hey, give or take that's less than 100 years you know yeah, yeah. whoever yeah. is 100 years old right now ha- is experiencing two pandemics mm. you know yeah. what i mean so so yeah to because i thought about that I, you know one of my dad's uh buddies unfortunately had passed like at the beginning of the year not you know related to covid but just mm. it was his time and mm. he lived to be like 70 80 something and i'm thinking to myself like how much has this man seen in his lifetime you know what i mean just from the right. black perspective alone i know if i was living from the early 1900s to now I've pretty much seen the whole spectrum of racism in America, you know, Mm -hmm. civil rights movement, Mm -hmm. everything. So Mm -hmm. I can only imagine what this man has probably seen and gone through. So to say, uh, we couldn't imagine that we might see this in our lifetime. I think by modern standards, you know, we would have protocols and, and, you know, safety measures to have in place, but to be honest, nature going to find a way. (laughs) <laughs> you don't find a way and we just don't experience it whether we're ready or not we're so crazy yep. to think of yep. you're not the alphas like, here <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> like yep. it kind of it kind of puts into perspective like what is the meaning of time you know what i mean in in, in a very real way because like if you are 100 and you've experienced two pandemics well, what is the meaning of time you know mm-hmm. Damn, you have had a lot of the time to think, haven't you, Denzel? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, think, I, think, I think a lot, man. That's, that's, that's good. What I do. That's good, bro. <laughs> yeah. Dropping those well, loaded I, questions. I want some of that. I want some of that juice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that's, ep- that's epic, though, to go oh, through man. two pandemics in your lifetime. Right? Seriously. Not to mention uh, all the other stuff that was in between those two pandemics. A lot of, yeah. Uh, that's, that's crazy. A lot. <clears throat> the stories they could tell. Mm-hmm. That's why it's always good to talk to elder people and hear them out. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So talk to your elders. Get a new script idea. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of script, uh, are you still writing on that script? 
Uh, which grip? Okay, well, which one? You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> my bad, my bad. You got multiple scripts on, on the works. What, what, were yeah. we, uh, what were we talking about? Uh, I don't. I thought you were working on a script. You were uh, working on some writing in quarantine. I have been. I have. So I'm working on. Let's see. I'm working on a new TV series mm -hmm. uh, that I've been developing with my buddies. It, it's something that's kind of like entertainment centric, which of course, like we need another entertainment centric idea. But you know, it, it's from our perspective. I'd say from the minority perspective of kind of what we go through as actors within this business. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and and definitely some of the experiences that I personally had or my buddies have personally had. You mm -hmm. know, it's. It, it's kind of fun, not only uh, for people of color, but just fun in general to see like kind mm -hmm. of the adversities and the bullshit that can happen in the industry, you know? Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. one uh, project that I'm coming up with. Another one I'm coming up with, which I've been writing for about a year and a half now, uh, is called 5150. And that's, again, kind of about a egotistical celebrity who gets put under... Uh, Psychi psychiatric care for 72 hours so psychological thriller i've been watching nice. a lot of those lately i just watched hey, hey, uh, hey. <laughs> yeah i just watched uh shining um what was the mm. other one that i'd seen uh a cure for wellness and then i'm gonna watch shutter island tonight so Ooh, yeah I, that's, uh, that's been kind of fun in between <laughs> so i'm research. writing those two projects <laughs> yeah yeah exactly doing some research writing those yeah. two projects uh and then i got a couple other that i'm doing some notes on but you know those are the, those have been the focuses what was the 50 51 51 50. 50 yeah. that's the code words. for um uh call right uh it's a call sign code for uh suspect is crazy exactly exactly yeah so trade i don't know how i know that 51 50. <laughs> 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 <Note to sell. laughs> oh, so. we just learned something about michael right? i know yeah. i was like oh crap that's that's what have that's you been doing in quarantine michael uh, yeah. right? i know right <laughs> <laughs> i don't know but these police won't leave me alone <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's why he's way out there in the woods I know. right <laughs> But I, I'm always um, impressed by people that write because I I can't I, I, it's so hard for me to write I find it very difficult. I'm not so, I'm not gonna lie to you, man. I uh, I think within the last two years I've just quote unquote decided to call myself a writer. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think I think we always wear the hats, uh -huh. um, and especially within storytelling, you know, you have to uh, from an independent perspective just get your idea out. You know what I mean? Um, now what's my forte like again i'm, I'm kind of like all three of you guys where i've worn many different hats my main hats are acting and directing but you know i've edited a cartoon network for five years was part of the animation guild um yes. do a lot of voiceover the one uh, there in burbank graphic. cartoon network of burbank exactly oh yeah, yeah. Cool. exactly nice. um do a lot of graphic design as well you know, I tried to learn 3D. That wasn't for me. Uh, but right now, like one of my one of my trades that I'm that I'm looking to learn uh, in quarantine is grading. Mm, you know, that's mm. kind of like my next big venture uh, that mm -hmm. I want to learn and da Vinci. Do photography as well. Exactly, I got to learn yeah. Da Vinci. Yep, do photography as well. So it's like you're always putting on multiple hats. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So when it came down yeah. to writing, writing was a necessity the same way editing was a necessity for me as a director to continue to tell my stories. Because I knew the stories that I wanted to tell, but how do I convey what's in my head to another writer? And then they're yeah. always getting it wrong, and I'm going behind them and fixing it. <laughs> and I'm going behind them, and I'm using the same techniques from the different scripts that I've read over the years as an actor. And people are like, oh man, you're a storyteller, you know how to write. No, I don't know how to write, I don't want to do this, just do it. <laughs> you <know what> I mean? <laughs> but you know you got to give your you got to give yourself credit sometimes like when you actually know yeah. something you, you mm -hmm. could be good at it so i don't claim to be proficient and i don't claim to be the best writer out there there's plenty no, no, of no. more people capable than myself but right. i have grown to love it and i found myself to be uh really good and actually now helping other people develop their scripts just mm. based on the time that i have invested as an actor and the time that i've invested as the director reading scripts and understanding like the structure of story you know what i mean mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For so sure. you know you never know where those talents may come from uh right. especially within this business you you gotta wear so many different hats and you 
you got to work with other de other departments that you just end up kind of learning everything you know mm -hmm. it, it, it's good for your toolkit yeah i mean oh, the I art art of storytelling especially in film is just so many gr crafts rolled into one and the more exposed you are to each one the more effective of a storyteller and leader as a director producer whatever you're uh you get to be mm -hmm. absolutely you know absolutely. One recommendation I wanted to throw out there for you, you're talking about psychological thrillers. I just watched this last night. Mm -hmm. The guys are going to laugh at me, obviously, because of what network it's on. Um, but it's on uh, Quibi. Uh, uh, and I was... <laughs> uh, it's uh, what's interesting to me about it as a psychological thriller. It's called uh -huh. Survive. Um, okay. And um, Quibi is that short form content, basically 10 minute episodes produced really well. But I was like, okay, how are they going to deal with the psychological thriller? And this is probably the one show out of all of them that I've watched that has probably kept my attention um, the most, even through the action shows and some of the other comedy shows. But this one's really good. Like, I would okay. throw this in your in your list too uh, if you if and you it's had called time. Survive. It's called Survive. Yeah, it's on Quibi. Okay. It's on the app, um, and it's really really good. It's got um, nice. Sophie Turner as the main uh, as the lead, but it's okay. all in this uh, mental ward. And uh, ah. it's really, really interesting the way it was written. Yeah, that sounds right up my alley. Okay, yeah. have, you seen, have you seen Quibi yet, Denzel? I haven't. I was actually going to ask, what What are you guys' thoughts on Quibi? Man, we, we just we just recorded our follow up <laughs> episode uh, a week after using Quibi. Uh, that's supposed to post in the next couple of days. Yeah, I'll probably uh, okay. post tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we're we're on the fence right now. We're 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 just, positive. Just short. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, very, it's very short. <laughs> I was, I wasn't a fan. I'll just, I'll just, uh, I'll just yeah. I wasn't, okay. I wasn't a fan of it. You yeah, weren't yeah, a fan, yeah. like not even like trying it, but even going into it, you, you had a lot of red flags too. <laughs> but we're trying yeah, to be optimistic. No, yeah, that's true. We all tried to be optimistic for it. Yeah. And I'm yeah. still, I'm still going to go through the entire 90 days and try to watch yeah. everything I can on there. But mm -hmm. yeah. It's the just cool, such so a different format. The cool thing about it, Denzel, is that it it's mobile. It's made for mobile. So whether it's horizontal or vertical, wherever you flip right. your phone or iPad or tablet, um, it adjusts to, to that. So it's specifically made to go vertical or horizontal. So you could be sitting there watching it. And this is what we did when we first started watching an episode. We're just flipping it just to see it go. And it would be right. like a wide shot and then the actor's there. And then when you flip it vertical, it crops in on the actor. So it doesn't just crop mm -hmm. it in the middle of the screen. It specifically knows where to crop in. On. So I guess they do two different edits. Yeah, so I, yeah, I researched I that a little bit and they uh, they do. They do the normal landscape version first and then they create a new sequence, the editors, mm -hmm. and then they'll create a vertical version of it. Right. And then they'll basically move the frame accordingly on every single cut. Yeah. And then the script and the programming is, you know, obviously when it, the turns, it goes knows. to this one. Yeah. yeah. Yep. But the creative, the creative challenges there are just extremely interesting to me. That was one of the things I was most interested about the program because, you know, these filmmakers are shooting accordingly. It's going to be very difficult to plan a two shot of actors, you know, <laughs> when mm -hmm. oh, yeah. if they turn it vertical. Who, who are we focusing on here in this part of the conversation? It's it's pretty cool exactly like what what does that do for your for your shot selection and, and planning right. out or exactly about uh how you want to tell the story mm -hmm. it limits you a little bit I, but it forces you to be creative yeah you know what uh like I, I i definitely would love to see a platform like quibi win um yeah. not necessarily from the mobile perspective but for the shorts perspective because i mm -hmm. don't really think there's a a home and enough importance on shorts right you know and especially like within uh how would they say american entertainment the way we you know consume content consume it's the it. same mm -hmm. way with like anime you know i don't think we really consume anime uh the way like say for so the eastern cultures have done and, and embraced it and you know they they're taking anime to a whole new level and i think that's a whole platform that we as americans uh in western culture haven't really taken in properly you know what i mean mm. so the same thing with shorts like we don't really have a, a platform to put them on uh i don't think itunes or netflix or anybody has done it well vimeo was once that place and it still kind of is but even vimeo you know for lesser better terms is kind of a clusterfuck to go and watch shorts so yeah. where is like the home that really kind of designates shorts or where is the category on netflix where people can go watch them so if quibi is going to be that 
I would love to see it shine. Mm-hmm. Now, I guess off top, without me even trying Quibi, my first initial thoughts are kind of like, my first initial thoughts are kind of like modern cars. Mm. And and let me explain this. <laughs> <laughs> my parents just bought this uh, GMC Sierra truck, right? Uh. And it's a, it's a wonderful pickup truck. And it's got so many features. I mean, it's got wireless charging and it's got like, 3d cameras all around so when you're backing up you have the full scope you know it has automatic sensors uh you can pretty much program user settings so the whole car adjusts to your user settings blah 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 (laughs) now here's what i'm getting at is like at the end of the day how many people in the market for pickup trucks are ever going to use the full extent of these features yeah (laughs) the same thing with buying a sports car I'm so mad at Porsche for all of the new, you know, additions that they're adding to the career, the career where it's like, at the end of the day, people want a sports car. You're putting in all of these modern features to make it more mm. comfortable and make it more like a mm. Tesla. That's not what people want. Yeah. So to go back to Quibi, if we're going to sit here and we're going to film content that's based on the mobile phone, that's a whole different discussion than if we're going to film content that's specifically to how short films. You see what I'm getting at? Mm -hmm. So is it more feature? I mean, is it more like features that make us enjoy the product or is it, you know, just better content being housed in a better place? Mm -hmm. Correct. (laughs) Correct. Correct answer. I'm feeling feeling your correct answer. (laughs) You win. I'm just, that's what I'm curious about. Like, is it? Yeah, which which category are they going for? Are they going for the tech savvy cool thing, it's, or are they going for the shorts? Right. Yeah, yeah. It's Gosh, really hard to say now, especially with what the CEO just uh, put out there, that they never had envisioned streaming to television, that it was mm-hmm. only going to be mobile. But based on their initial feedback a week after launch, they've pushed that straight to the top of development now to actually make it to where they can stream uh, on television. That doesn't make sense. Why would they That's not what I, for that? <laughs> that's what I was like. Correct. And what yeah, exactly. the question mark yeah. there is is, well, who's uh-huh. planning this content and how to make this content most effective? <laughs> right. that, that's my biggest. That's my biggest concern right now. Is is uh, for it is how the content's being created for the medium it's going to be exposed on. I, I'm not sure if it's yeah. connected. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, <laughs> correct. That was but, my reaction to it. Correct. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've got no. I've got nothing to say. That... Okay, let me ask you guys this: any, any of you guys got Disney Plus? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay, so y'all still in love with Disney Plus, right? Of course. Yeah. I mean, in love, yeah. I mean, of course. Right. I mean, love's a, yeah. Right. Yeah, lo- love's, love's a big right, term. Right. <laughs> well, I guess what I'm getting at is that's another modern platform that just came out that really made a, a huge splash. You know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. and they mm-hmm. rolled out with like the Mandalorian, which was an instant success. And mm-hmm. you know, they have all the Disney classics on there that all make us feel like we were kids again. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So I guess what I'm trying to get at is like content is still key above all right. and for a platform like that like it instantly grabbed on and now all of a sudden you could package that with hulu and espn and you could consolidate them all into one and your bill comes down like mm. that's how you roll out a platform mm-hmm. for sure. that seems like the amazing way to go so quibi i guess yeah i'm, I'm kind of confused why don't get me wrong i want to watch it on my phone but out of convenience of me moving from place to place I yeah. still want to watch my shit when I get home, like on the mm-hmm. TV. Right. <laughs> yeah. It just seems like a really missed opportunity yeah. there. If I'm interested yeah. in it while I'm being transient, I should be just as interested sitting in a comfortable chair at my house or my couch watching it on television. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's what kind of rubs me the wrong way, which Michael had said before, um, that their target audience is the people on the go. They said you can watch mm-hmm. it while you're waiting in line at a grocery store, blah, blah, blah. You're at the gym on a treadmill, so it's made to be on your mobile where you're not fully paying attention to it. Maybe it's kind of mm-hmm. in the background, like a podcast yeah. would be. So to me, they don't necessarily care about the content, mm-hmm. um, which leads me to the next point: is that um, if you watch the uh, Liam Hem- Liam Hemsworth show with Christoph, the Holtz, most dangerous game, yeah, the most dangerous game. That's the one they're pushing the hardest. Um, it's a good, good, good show, but it, it's basically a movie. 
mm-hmm. and they basically take that movie and they break it down in episodes. But right. these episodes are six to eight minutes, right? Yeah. And then and then there's an ad, and then you watch another episode, six to eight minutes, and then there's an ad. So if you were to take that movie, would you sit there and watch that movie on Netflix if there was an ad every eight minutes? No, no. you wouldn't. So <laughs> Possibly to me, that- if it was free. <laughs> but it's not free. <laughs> Quibi, you gotta, you gotta yeah. pay for Quibi. Then of course not. Yeah. I'm not paying for it. Right. I'm not paying um, for it. Yes. So to me, they don't care about the content because A, if you're on the, it's mobile, you're on the go, you're not paying attention to it. They just want those ads to be played because that's how they make their money. Yeah. Yeah. And then but, that's why they don't have it on TV. But if they had it on TV, then okay, you could sit down and watch your movie on your TV on Quibi, and actually pay attention to the to the content. And have an ad pop up every time, so that's your bathroom break. There goes our sponsor, <laughs> Dan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But my the thing I was most excited about it is like I think what you were alluding to, Denzel, is the opportunity that it might provide not only for the short form content, but I mean, gosh, you you have an idea for an idea, like into eventually get that idea into an original series via HBO, Netflix, whatever, an original series. Gosh, that just the pilot alone is a massive, massive project. 45 minute pilot, have to get this all produced, have to write it, number one. And but then I think about the scale of Quibi, if it does work and the audience can adjust to this type of format. The opportunity it will open up for these ideas that you don't have necessarily time to fully write out, fully produce. It makes it a lot easier to produce that pilot and to at least test that idea to see if, if there could be an audience there. That was probably the biggest thing I was most excited about for Quibi. If it does take and if it does take off, is the opportunity that's going to open up for storytellers and filmmakers. Right. I'm not going to lie. Like the actual idea of short form content. Um, I love it. It's kind of like have you when you watch Adult Swim and they do their 15 minute segments of content. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, what was that one? I know Robot Chicken is definitely one of them. Yeah. And that's that's kind of cut up. There was one show and it was stop animation and it was about um, it's about like a little preacher kid who, who was trying to choose right from wrong. Does anyone? Oh remember? yeah. I'm trying to remember that. Mm. I thought that was on Robot Chicken, but that wasn't on Robot Chicken. It wasn't on Robot Chicken. Yeah. It came on Adult right. Swim later. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But it was only it was only fifteen minute segments, you know. Mm-hmm. And they're they're kind of known for doing the fifteen minute segments. And I always thought like that was a great way to roll out content, you know. Or even mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. me developing my short film right now. The short film that I want to do right now, you know, we've thought about like what could this expanded idea be whether it be feature whether it be series Mm -hmm. or whatnot and to me like the most exciting uh idea or prospect for this short film would be to make it a limited series Mm because me personally i'm I'm so tired and sick of of all of these sequels and and franchises don't get me wrong they're fun when they're good and they're executed well but not everything needs to be a damn sequel and franchise (laughs) eight fucking seasons of, you know. Seriously. I, yeah, not, take a serious. risk on an original idea. Just take yeah, a risk yeah. like we used to. <laughs> not every show needs eight seasons. That's nefarious 19. Exactly. So so to that point, like with a Quibi, and if the home is the right place for shorts, you can have something that's maybe only three 10 minute episodes. Boom, done. Get it away. Mm. You know what I mean? Or maybe you do have like, you know 10 installments of 15 minute increments like it's it's a cool home if that is the place and they take a chance where you can like you said michael exercise shorter ideas that aren't necessarily meant to be these long form ideas Mm -hmm. but it's still creative imaginative refreshing storytelling you know what i mean Mm -hmm. sure like that that would that'd be amazing if if Mm -hmm. is the is that if that's where it ends up you know hopefully that's the dream. <laughs> yeah, but that's why as, as soon as you as soon as you brought up the uh, the short film that you're writing, the fifty uh, fifty one fifty. Well, that's yep. Uh, I was trying to yeah. say that fifty one fifty. We know you're good. Yeah. 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 We know you've never been fifty one fifty. Go ahead, no, yeah, we yeah, get yeah. it. Keep it <laughs> so the fifty one fifty. As soon as you brought that up, um, I, I thought of Quibi. I thought mm-hmm. that that could be a good platform because they definitely need content. Um, and if you're going the short film route, that would be really great to see it on Quibi. 
yeah so. it'd be amazing we're, we're looking in their direction you know but mm -hmm. you guys kind of kind of got me tripped up with this whole phone thing. <laughs> I, ain't gonna, I ain't gonna lie to you first of all, <laughs> if you watching you know 5150 the way i intend people to watch it i don't want you at the Vertical. checkout line oh yeah watching yep. something like this or scanning oh, wow. your groceries uh, yeah. and your limes that's what i'm Pay saying attention. they don't care about yeah. the content that's what i'm saying yeah. wow you, you just hit devote... me with a bunch of truth that totally flew over my head until you just said that right now <laughs> that's what i'm saying for the content <laughs> right. creators for the yeah, actors that just directors, put a whole new fear for the me. producers the writers whoever's creating all this content they're putting all their energy and creativity into it for somebody to sit there and not even really pay attention to it just so yeah. ads can play exactly that's so that's what swipe the wrong my way. credit card and move on oh, this, <laughs> yeah. this is a good episode yeah oh shit they doing hey, what you need okay uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. yeah I'll, I'll watch the third one when i get to my next yeah what? yeah and not remember oh, my, any episode of it 16. exactly yeah <laughs> exactly yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wait, or happened? even worse even worse the whole time they're doing that it's in vertical mode so they only see a portion of your frame <laughs> exactly then, then just, we just end in up, case then we end up at the emmys next year and you get nominated for the best whatever short format and it's like <laughs> yeah. well, did anybody watch it anybody other than the critics actually watch the show yeah <laughs> who's judging here exactly oh golden gosh. globes for the best vertical short film <laughs> god yeah, just in case you weren't paying enough, paying attention to it at all in the checkout line, we, we went ahead and made sure it was vertical just so you could see less of it. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> they put ads in between every eight minutes. Here's a um, question for you guys, because it kind of plays into the, to the same thing that we're talking about now. Movie theaters, the experience mm. of going to the movies. Now, we mm. all are film buffs, from what I understand. So yeah. mm. what do you think is going to be the new norm coming out of quarantine, especially with the film businesses? You know, it's kind of scary. The <laughs> yeah. Even knowing that they're allowing, you know, what's showing in theaters to be streamed on Amazon right now. Like, mm -hmm. man, I understand the reason for it, but the fear of the audience's culture adjusting to that and making that normal is scary i i imagine right. bringing my son to a movie theater and him being excited about it mm -hmm. not hey son do you want to go see, watch your movie no dad we'll just watch it right here you know I, yeah. it's scary that's scary to me yeah but that's what i love about uh scorsese when they did uh irishman he mm -hmm. negotiated with netflix and said you know we'll do this with you guys if you allow us to put it in theaters Mm -hmm. And so they got to do a two week run in theaters before it went live on Netflix because he said, you know, cause he's, he's old school. He's, he, he wants right. to see it in the proper format, which is a film mm -hmm. screen 16 by nine aspect ratio and all that stuff. So it, it's interesting. Now, did you guys go see it in theaters? <laughs> I, no, I didn't. No. We're going to edit this out. Pause. Hold on. Pause. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that a foot in your mouth? Uh, that, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Like, uh, well, I, I, I well, wanted I to. With you. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. With the exclusive run in theaters, did they drop simultaneously or was one exclusive before the other the theater run was exclusive before the netflix okay. run so they that could try sense. to get the, the theater yeah revenue now yeah. i would have mind you if i was in la at the time i did get the invites for the screenings so mm -hmm. i would have went and saw it in theaters via the screenings because <laughs> <laughs> i didn't have to pay for it <laughs> be clear on record for those listening <laughs> right exactly. would have went to see it <laughs> in case you were wondering before you crucify this man yeah, yeah. yeah. he would have oh, he, he thought but, about it guys he thought about it yeah. i mean that's kind of like i don't know if you guys are gamers are you guys gamers at all? Yeah. Uh, Xbox, PlayStation, or PC? Oh, okay. Excuse for you. Me. Which one? No, 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 for you. I'm asking. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a PlayStation guy. PlayStation, yeah, me yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're all PlayStation here. Okay. Fire. Um, but I mean, you know, same thing with like, quote unquote, Xbox exclusives, where maybe they'll get like Call of Duty mm -hmm. before oh, yeah, you know, yeah. some other platform or whatnot. I can yeah. definitely see that business model working. I was, I was, I was reading this the other day uh, in the Hollywood Reporter, and they were talking about, you know, just the new business model of uh, film distribution, mm -hmm. and how you know certain films like Bloodshot, Invisible Man, 
what was it uh onward i think they already released trolls yeah yeah, the, yeah trolls mm-hmm. and they're doing and very well now they're doing capone with tom hardy yeah wow. oh really yeah it was supposed oh, to come wow. out this summer and they're going to release it may 3rd on video on demand or whatever you can rent it interesting mm-hmm. and the the latter half of the article was basically talking about like there's still tentpole films like the new fast nine that's always going to be a film mm. that's going to want to release in theaters yeah. you know i myself i think of like you can't go watch maybe interstellar from your home it's not the same experience no, right Blade not gonna Runner, get it no. you know right. 2049 not the same experience right um and then mark cuban said something interesting in conjunction with that he was saying like i got a 16 year old son my 16 year old son is not going to want to invite his dates over to come watch a film you know mm-hmm. they're gonna want to get out of the house get away from the parents they're gonna go on gonna like have date night you know right. I, thought, I thought to myself like okay if i was just meeting some new girl right that's yeah hey you know you want to come mm-hmm. over tonight hey you want to see that, that netflix that chill? New blood shot we could we could watch it <laughs> she don't even know me no nope. she don't know what my house is like she, yeah i think i think at some point there is going to be the experience of we're going to still want to go out yeah. you know because i think you know just like going to a concert you're still going to go want to see a concert even though you could get the dudes mp3 mm-hmm. uh, and just download right. it straight to your phone but is it going to be like drive-in theaters where they're going to be mm-hmm. scarce mm-hmm. you know that's what i'm worried about yeah so you just have to invite 20 or 30 people over to your house next time you have a date <laughs> <laughs> right right exactly say so you're all gonna watch a movie together yeah i don't know gotta, i wonder you gotta give her theater uh previews of what <laughs> you gotta have somebody at the door ripping <laughs> tickets for you hold on you gotta watch this first i have dolby you know this isn't yeah. i mean a full I, projector it's a 70 inch <laughs> yeah. that's interesting though. i never thought about that as far as the just how much it affects our our date life and just our just culture it's culture, a big part yeah. of culture yeah it is not not just how you see the movie it's you can't go on a date you can't take a date to a movie anymore if they're going. especially an easy date where you don't have to do that much talking yeah. wow yeah, right, <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah yeah i don't know I, I wonder though i've always thought about it you know as storytellers and experience creators you know what <sighs> for the theater to the physical theater to move on and thrive it it has to evolve in a way and we've seen attempts with imax with augmented reality and i wonder where that experience is going to go if it's going to just be i I get in this row of seats and i sit here and i watch this big screen Mm -hmm. or how it might evolve we've seen the dine-in movie theaters we've seen all these things and i think Mm -hmm. there could be something beautiful at the end of this tunnel if it chooses evolve but i just I don't know exactly what that looks like. Possibly. What What's your yeah. favorite? What are your favorite uh, movie theater experiences? Since there's so many options out there. Oh man, what do you guys enjoy? I miss the ArcLight and Sherman Oaks. I don't know. All I the best Arclight. movie experiences that I had uh-huh. was ArcLight Sherman Oaks for some I love reason. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, Hollywood too, though. I mean, but I just went to the Sherman Oaks one a lot more. You know what else is going to be interesting? Oh, is the um, films that are shot in IMAX. So I remember I saw Dark Knight in IMAX and there mm-hmm. was that scene where he jumps off the building and it just goes straight and you feel like you're falling. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. an experience that you will not get at home. Never. For sure. Never. Yeah. No. I love so, uh Have you ever seen a movie in Dolby? The Dolby yeah. Atmos? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That to me is immersive. Like you mm-hmm. really realize like how important sound is yes you know, even more than picture mm-hmm. yeah. just like how you... it sort of sweeps through and yeah feel it. helicopters and go around got, your yeah. head yeah and you got yeah. the reclining seat so i'm i'm all right <laughs> do you do you keep the uh the vibration pack on or do you turn it turn it off turn it down i oh, always yeah, gotta no, turn I mine keep... down really yeah i gotta turn it down because i'm like what's going on <laughs> I'm trying to watch the movie it's like shaking everywhere it kind of reminds me of of, um, of going to see like a, a movie at universal i mean yeah, uh, not the, a movie i'm sorry but like one of those four transformers yeah rides rides yeah at universal yeah. studios yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. that's what that's <laughs> <You're> just like, <laughs> constantly moving around exactly. everywhere. Seat <laughs> keeps steady. Yeah, that was a good one. Transformers I, at Universal. That was a good one. That was a good one. I, 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 I did. Um, 
Uh, I did a. I went and watched the、uh, Pet Cemetery, the new Pet Cemetery,、mm. um, at the、uh, Chinese Theater in Hollywood、mm. with the seats that move. That's that was the first time I've ever tried that. That's kind of crazy because like <laughs> every jump scare, every jump scare, the the chairs would move and vibrate or like shift and turn. Every which way, it just it just added a more like holy shit type、uh, feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. That's interesting. It was intense. Yeah. yeah. Imagine think, watching、um, like 2012 while sitting. Oh my、those. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Oh, that would be insane. Just、mm-hmm. the earthquake sequence. <laughs> <laughs> Shake it like、mm-hmm. madness. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I don't、yeah. know. I hope they keep pushing the envelope, though. the The physical experience of watching a going to a theater and watching it. I hope they keep pushing the envelope and trying new things. It's going to be me, interesting to see what AMC does.、Mm-hmm. Do you、um, do you think why they're doing that kind of stuff is because of the quality of the movies, like maybe lack of、uh, like good movies coming out, and so they feel like they have to do that. Or do you think it's just an add-on to、um, the movie? The are you talking about? Are you talking about the the chairs or renting the movies online? Well, just like the whole thing, like the theater experience. Like, because before you go in,、mm-hmm. uh, you watch a movie, and you're you're, I mean, growing up, that's how how we all did it, and it was fine. But like we were saying, there's so many sequels and so many of this and that remakes and blah blah blah. It's like.、Mm-hmm. People have seen it. Do you think that the theaters are like sensing that? And so now, oh, now we're gonna sell alcohol now. Oh, now we're gonna sell dinner. Oh, now we're gonna rec-、oh. have you know chairs reclining、mm-hmm. back for more、mm-hmm. enjoyment.、Um, so, what's your guys' take on that? I think my take is because I worked at AMC at one point in my、uh, mm. life, and.、Um, <laughs> I learned a lot. I learned a lot behind the scenes there. Yeah. So I was unaware <clears throat> that the reason、uh, popcorn is seventy five dollars is because that's the only way they make their money,、um, and they don't make really any money off ticket sales. That's all the studios get. Basically, all that, and it depends on what they negotiate. So, like Disney negotiated Star Wars for the first three weeks or four weeks, they got ninety percent of revenue from ticket sales. And then after that, it trickled down to like eighty percent, seven. But it maxed out, I think, at seventy-five, eighty percent. So、that、the、totally、studios, sense, studios、yeah. always get seventy-five, eighty percent. And to run a movie theater, it's very expensive, a lot of overhead.、Mm-hmm. And if you're only getting ten percent of ticket sales, you got to do something to make some some revenue. So they sell popcorn for twelve dollars, fifteen dollars, when it only costs, I think, it was twenty-three cents for a bag of popcorn. Yeah. Was cost in the movie theater,、um, and then they started hot dogs, chicken wings, you know, whatever they could upsell.、Um, and then, okay, alcohol. There's a huge margin on alcohol, huge, huge margin. So like, let's get our liquor licenses. Let's sell alcohol. They got to make their money somehow, and that's why、yeah. they've been struggling because the studios take most of the ticket sales profits. So, yeah, drop this on you fellas. <laughs> you ever thought about why they call it a convenience stand? <laughs> concession stands. Well, concession stand. Yes, you're absolutely right.、Uh-huh. They're concession stands, but but、I、they're convenient getting, as well. Well, yeah. That's what, I'm, <laughs> what I'm trying to get at is that they are convenient. <laughs>、uh, they're they're basically selling you the convenience. You know what I mean? So for、yes. the same reasons why, you know, movie theaters, we are seeing them、uh, hit hard times, and you know why they're thinking about closing is like you said, they don't necessarily make a lot of money.、Mm-hmm. So. Charge for that damn convenience, you know what I mean?、Mm-hmm. And I think the reason why we are seeing experiences like reclinable seats and better sound and better picture and you know having liquor and et cetera, et cetera, is like people are lazy. Some people don't care about the movie experience like we care about the movie experience.、Mm-hmm, Some、yeah. people would rather sit at home. So now they're giving you all of these amenities that you can enjoy that are far better than what you'll be able to enjoy at your home. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Up to the technological standard that they can provide, and I do think there's something to be said, kind of about them always pushing forward with better sound and better picture. 
You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like I went to see a uh, 1917 in the Dolby Ooh, Atmos. Yep. Again, that's an experience that you can't get anywhere else except in that yeah. you know viewing yep. scenario. You know, yep. with, match with picture, match with sound. That's the way you want to see the film. You know yep. what I mean? So absolutely. Yeah, that's, I was that's, I was gonna bring that liberty. film up. Yep, I was yeah. gonna bring that one up when <laughs> we were talking about the movie theater shows. Like 1917 was shot for theater. Oh, mm-hmm. amazing! Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I would hate to enjoy sure. that on my computer for the first time. Right. <laughs> yeah. Or your, or your phone. <laughs> or your cell phone right. in vertical mode, yeah. just like this. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking about it. in 50 episodes. <laughs> Wait, with ads every eight minutes? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my what God. was 1917 about? I don't know. I forgot. I don't know. There's um, a lot of AT and T and Bobo. And... Speaking of, I watched a episode of the the Dangerous Hunger Game show thingy, um, the Danger Killing Game Hunger Show, whatever it is. Liam Hemsworth <laughs> that we we're talking about. Oh, most dangerous oh. game. Most dangerous game. That one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I watched the new episodes last night, and uh, T-Mobile ads kept popping up because I told you they have that they have well, that thing with T-Mobile now where you get it's the free. agreement, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You get Quibi for free if you're in a T-Mobile slash yeah. Sprint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they are the same company now. Um, what what uh, what was I going to ask you, Denzel? I forgot. Oh, uh, are you going to watch Tribeca? So I, I think they're doing Planet it this weekend. It. Yeah, because our is film it is. I, I don't, to be honest with you, I don't know what today is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All my days are, is today Thursday. Tuesday. Hey, right. <laughs> what Thursday. month are we in? I don't remember. Yeah, um, can we watch it? Cause my, I don't know if we can. But yeah, I think they're streaming it live, or they're doing something online now. They're doing the voting online. They're doing. They're still having the judging with their four judges, um, and they're doing everything online. I don't know if they're huh. streaming something live, but because yeah. my uh, my um my buddy Tommy. Well, they Hopson, have um. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, my buddy Tommy Hobson, his um, film, 12 Hour Shift, is uh, nominated for uh, Tribeca as well. Wow. They put us in the feature film category. I know, wow. right? That's crazy. I was like, interesting, because I guess it's a little bit longer than their short film category. It's longer would mean, than, so. yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's good wow. for us. That's cool. <laughs> Speak it <laughs> yeah, up, by the way, working on... Oh, what were you saying, Michael? I think they may be doing it through their app. I know that... Um, Vimeo OTT services do their app for them. Um, uh, so I think they may be actually premiering everything through their app, app Tribeca mm. SL. Mm, um, okay. Yeah. I thought they would have something on their website that would do. What, do which I was, I was curious. I wonder if they're going to, because I know it's another streaming service and has a subscription model. I was wondering if uh, they're waiving that. If they are, then I'm definitely joining. <laughs> yeah, because then they'd be streaming all the sure. films and ours would be on mm-hmm. there. So everybody could view it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Check it out. Yeah, definitely. Otherwise, we would be at Tribeca probably. That'd be that'd be fun. Yeah, right? that'd be badass. <laughs> but we'd all have to stand six feet apart. So. Right. I know. <laughs> yeah. that's a, oh, that's, that's one of the things. What do you guys yeah. think of that? They're talking about when they do open the country back up. Um, I'm like excited for NBA. I can't. I'm missing my NBA. But, mm. um, they're talking about when they bring sports back um or even movies movie if mm-hmm. movie theaters stick around that yep. they bring people in with the distance in mind and they do like every couple seats mm-hmm. what do you guys think okay. of that i mean it it sucks for the business obviously less less sales per movie I mean, but right. uh, yeah uh, per showing uh but i mean i don't know i think whatever it takes to get us healed from this yeah <laughs> um do you think that is an effective does that would that help to me i don't date so well not for it (laughs) (laughs) denzel takes a date date denzel takes a date to uh to a a basketball the lakers game and his day six feet away (laughs) she's like six (laughs) seats down you enjoying yourself (laughs) (laughs) hold on i'll text you how are you doing down there (laughs) like uh so what does that work for like dates or families because do families now gotta right. sit six yeah feet apart? they're they... they're they're talking about every ticket would have to be a couple seats apart to me it'd be when they broadcast it it's gonna a look uh, look awkward because there's a few person like <laughs> every six seats um but on top of that does that really 
stop the coronavirus. I mean, uh, you're all I walking in at this together. You're all touching seats as you go to your seat. You're all using close. the same restroom. Yeah, you, yeah. I don't and see also, it. Also, not gonna lie, you might be six feet apart horizontally, but vertically, those seats aren't. Six those, feet apart. Your knees are right behind somebody's head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't Definitely. know how they're gonna do it. They didn't. I don't know. <laughs> I have no clue. Right. What's the logic there? <laughs> I don't think yeah. there is that. I think it's just kids, people in the seats that makes some revenue. Mm -hmm. But um, interesting. But yeah, Tribeca. The uh, our film is in Tribeca, so I'll go back to that. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna try. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is I think you were the one that went to the whole basketball. I did, oh, I did too. I, I'm all over the place. I never. <laughs> uh, I ain't gonna lie, I miss basketball. That I, uh, miss, yeah. I miss. I miss. I don't necessarily period. miss leaving the house. I just miss going to events like that. And then yeah. Come back to the house. Even yeah. just watching basketball at home or at a you know at a friend's house or just anything event like going to a game, man. Yeah. Yeah. But like who's going your, to a friend's yeah. house? Yeah. Who, who's your team, Denzel? Who's your team? Oh, I say Lakers. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it ain't Lakers. Uh, uh, I've always been a Bulls fan growing up, but the Bulls oh yeah, are dude, complete utter shit. So yeah, it don't matter. Yeah, you can't really root for them right now. They ain't, they ain't really much happening there. My yeah. parents, they're uh, season holders for the Clippers. So oh, okay. more times than not, I find myself at Clippers games. Uh, okay. I know that team really well at this point. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. That's a good team. That's a fun team. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they're, oh, they're fun to watch. I love going they, to the they stadium. They really got a shot. They really got a shot this year. Mm -hmm. Or had. You know, had, had, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what's going to happen now, but... Yeah. Um, yeah. Thinking of what I was saying about our film, uh, going to Tribeca, when we worked on that film, Denzel, uh, it's funny because I didn't know the whole... Um, whole story i didn't know uh, i thought it was more of a serious role mm -hmm. um because when my agents my agency sent me the the breakdown i i read the breakdown and then i video auditioned so i submitted with the video and then they they offered me the role and i remember we were shooting our scene and that's all i had read was our scene mm -hmm. and so yeah. i played it as you know this arrogant cocky you know uh commercial agent guy that doesn't give you you know a second look you know what i mean like mm -hmm. i don't give you the time of day so i just kept kind of ignoring you never making eye contact um just to f to frustrate you uh, right, right. and I, and i learned after we when we watched it at the screening at the premiere um that it's a comedy <laughs> <laughs> and it, and it, but it was really funny because i remember after our scene um the scene that you say you're talking to everybody at the table and you're like hey, i'm sitting here and i'm showing them my portfolio and then you should have seen the color just come from their face or whatever and they already <laughs> ain't got no color <laughs> and I just started, everybody starts laughing i was like oh shit, that's funny <laughs> um, but i didn't know that coop was was shooting it and editing it as as you know more of a comedy um so it's kind of funny that's... to play it that way yeah no, no no i think i think what you did what we you know did within that scene was absolutely perfect because mm -hmm. that's kind of the that's kind of the irony and also the uh the beauty of life i guess you could say like the art of life like most dramatic tragic whatever it may be scenarios if we were to really step back and kind of look at them they are hilarious to some extent mm -hmm. right. you know what i mean um but while you're in it there's nothing hilarious about it so i think the intentionality and in, in how you played it with you know the seriousness and the cockiness and i definitely felt that energy on the other side you know playing oh, yeah. emoji so i was able to work off of that i think it worked yeah beautifully. yeah dude you you show you actually showed it to me like brilliantly because i remember there was a few takes because you know you uh, we did take after take after take and i remember there was uh one of the takes i remember your response to my uh i remember which line it was i was saying but i said something and i, I remember just looking at you and then you gave me that emotion back in just that look there was like this look that we had i was like dude this kid can act this dude knows how to act for sure and i was like yeah you, you gave it back to me i was like oh because you you know obviously you work off of your your opposite you know your partners the way that so yeah you did a phenomenal job man thank you likewise yeah man. i uh 
it's it's a project to be proud of, man. It's, it's, oh yeah, it came out really project. well, man. Coop's so yeah. talented, such a talented director. He really is, man. He's he's one of those rising uh, filmmakers to watch. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I'm excited to see where his career and the projects oh, yeah. that he's already done where it takes him. Yep. Yeah, it's so ironic. I was uh, I I was in LA. December, something like that, November. I remember I hit you up and we were going to have lunch, but you were actually filming something. You were out, you were out of state, you were out of town. Uh, During December? It was like October, November last year. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I flew in and uh, we tried to link up for lunch, but you were busy and filming something in another state. And uh, I remember my buddy Jacques, Jacques Dersina, shout out to Jacques. He, uh, he's a producer, actor, um, and I had shown him uh, You Shoot Videos. So they watched it, and uh, as I left for LA a couple of days later, I left LA a couple of days later, he calls me. Um, I'm in Kansas City, and he calls me when I landed, and he's like, dude, I was just on set today for a commercial. He's working on a commercial. Guess who walks up as the director? Yeah. Coop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, dude, so wow. my world. Yeah, so he didn't know about yeah. Morgan Cooper. I showed him you shoot videos, and I showed him the uh, Fresh Prince trailer. Uh -huh. That's a good uh, one. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's yeah. super talented, and he's like, "Oh man, this dude's talented." And then, literally, a couple of days later, he gets booked with a commercial with Coop. Man, you know that small like, world. strange coincidence. Small world. <laughs> yeah, it's super small world. Love it though. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, you sent uh, the link over to check out the um, you shoot videos, and um, uh, I started binge watching. <laughs> mm -hmm. all, all of Cooper's projects. <laughs> I'm like, everything looks good. Oh yeah, he's yeah. he's he's got such an eye, dude. Super talented mm -hmm. guy. He really, really cool. Down to earth too. Down to earth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you're doing more producing, did though too? Because I know you produced uh, the other short film that you worked on, right? Which? One? <laughs> uh, it was uh, uh, what was it? Uh, G uh, Will. Will the machine, yeah, yeah. Will the yeah. machine, yeah. Did, um, did you produce that one as well, did or did you? I, yeah, I, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. So I was an executive producer on that one. Um, mm -hmm. And I actor as well. Of, yeah, and actor. Uh, yeah. I've sort of had an active hand in that. That was more like sort of a creative notes uh, beforehand and on the back end. You know, once they brought me into pre-production, once I was casted. Mm. Uh, I just kept inputting feedback and I was kind of helping facilitate see the film through and that's mm. how I became a producer on that. Um, oh nice. But yeah, it's, it's the same way with editing or writing, it's out of necessity. Yep. You know, mm -hmm. you find yourself just playing different roles and, and mm -hmm. learning different hats. And collaborating so, in different forms, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yep. So my first two short films, uh, which I wrote and directed, I was also a producer on. Um, mm -hmm. I produced this one short film called Jump. Uh, mm -hmm. with Kofi Sirbo, who he's on Clean Sugar. Mm -hmm. You know, that was his first directorial debut, so I went out and helped him produce that. And uh, and I learned a lot from producing music videos. You mm -hmm. know, as, as mm -hmm. director, um, you get a finite budget and you really can't hire anybody, so you're also scrambling to put together all of those resources and make every line item work, and you just kind of kind of learn the ins and outs of production that way, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. that's another job that I don't do. Uh, writing and editing and producing, I will pass that along to anybody more qualified. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> more qualified. <laughs> yeah, the budget yeah. is not allowed, then we will do it. You know. Yeah, I mean? just yeah. one less headache. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. Got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah. It is. It is good to get on the back end, though. I remember um, me and Jacques were at a mixer uh, in Hollywood a few years back, and we we ran it. We met the uh, the DP of House, the show House, back when House mm -hmm. was was running, and he was talking to us and giving me some advice. And at the time, I was just acting, and he said, "Have you ever directed?" And I was like, "No, I mean, I do photography sometimes, but I, you know, I mostly just act." And he goes, "You should, you should direct too. You should get be behind the camera. You have to experience both ends, because mm. it only helps you." with acting and vice versa because there's mm -hmm. some directors that have to take acting classes so they know how to right. direct an actor so mm -hmm. he suggested that and then that's when sat down wrote the short film and then got everybody together filmed it you know just to experience that the back end of it i don't disagree with a man I, yeah. I can honestly say my not only my first short film but my second short film taught me a lot 
it was, it was probably the biggest uh, project that I went and undertook up until that point. And that one was? That was Criminal. Criminal, that's right. Uh, yeah. And so casting that project, oh man, I learned so, <laughs> so much. Just being on the other side of that casting table and watching actors come in and, you know, all various stages, whether they're cool, calm, and collected, or whether they were frightened and nervous. And oh, yeah. Having to basically like, deal with another actor's persona but also pull those performances out of them because mm -hmm. you know that was like my first real uh project that had drama to it and you know i was very thankful and then i was able to reflect on the experiences that i've had as an actor where most of the directors that i've really gotten along with were probably already actors themselves who have became directors or you know directors who really understand understood the nuances of acting and emotion and storytelling and were able to convey that well you know what i mean like having the the good fortune to work with uh, denzel washington he was one of those who you know was able to pull a performance and do his directing bit so mm -hmm. very much so like i could totally see directors needing to take acting classes you really learn how much is out of your control when you sit on the other side of the camera right <laughs> yeah when i when i sat uh behind the casting table and, mm -hmm. and i had these actors come in it clicked to me out of all the years that i've been in the industry where it's like yo I have really no power when I walk into these rooms. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter if the casting director loves you or hates you. You might be best friends with the producer or director. You might not line up with this other actor and you guys might not be a great pairing. You might outshine your lead actor. So all of a sudden, you know, you don't make sense. There's so many things that are outside of your control. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. um, and I, I think that was super beneficial and helpful to sit on the other side of that and mm -hmm. learn that. You know what I mean? And so likewise, um, like the DP who gave you that advice, mm -hmm. it's not only necessary, but I think it's it's a, it's an incredible tool to have within your arsenal. Because on the flip side as an actor, you know, learning what, what a sound guy uh, does and how he makes a sound and how he has to place like a lot of mic, mm -hmm. learning, you know, a cinematographer and their different lens choices now as an actor i'm very conscious of mm -hmm. the things that are going on around me so if a sound guy puts a mic here i'm not going to intentionally rub this area knowing that mm -hmm. i'm going to fuck up sound now <laughs> right shooting can you guys hear me better <laughs> right if some if somebody's shooting me on a 50 you know it's very different than somebody who's shooting me on an 85 or maybe yeah. 100 yeah. So you know you know the like, lens mm -hmm. Yeah, you know the lens, you know what emotions you need to bring to the table, you know how much you need to give. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, not looking for praise, I've had different crew members come up to me within my career and they'll be like, oh man, I can tell you know, you know your way around your set or you're a really trained actor mm -hmm. because you know certain things like that. And it only helps, you're making everybody's job. Easier Everybody that. easier and happy, yeah. yeah. You're yeah. like, copy that. I copy that. <laughs> yeah. 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 All those set workers be like, copy that. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Copy that. Yeah. Copy that. <laughs> yep. Copy that. They, lo they, they love that too. When you speak their lingo, copy that. Uh -huh. Can we get a flag in this oh, poll yeah. over here? Like, copy that. <laughs> copy that. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. That redhead, copy that. Oh, I need to get out of your way. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and keeping continuity, you know, you know, you're trained, so you know how to keep the continuity. It makes everybody's job easier. It makes it easier, man. Um, so I'm not gonna go through your whole uh resume because we're I'm gonna do that in post. We're just gonna and I'm not gonna ask you to do it because I hate that when people are like, What have you been in? <laughs> <laughs> and then you have to sit there oh, and just God. ramble off your resume. It's so silly. So um, where have I seen your work? Yeah, <laughs> so cringe. That's so, so like, cringe. The weirdest thing. I'm not gonna lie. That's the weirdest thing when you like meet somebody in person and they and they meet you and they're like, Oh, oh man, yeah. yo, bro, I love your work. Like, I knew you look familiar. Yo, what have you been in? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you. I knew I recognized you. What, what were I you? <laughs> You're like, wait, what? So all of a sudden you you kind of know me, but don't, and now you want kind me to of. list off my resume to you, and then that's gonna yeah. kind of seem braggy at some point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's that's what I hate because <laughs> actors and and well filmmakers in general, 
hate to do that. They don't want to toot their own horn or sit there and act like they're bragging or something because normally they're not like that. So when you ask that question, it forces them to do that. And I hate that. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's such a weird, uh, weird been in? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so. But I did want to ask you about, um, Oh, well, speaking of, before I do ask you this, uh, Cena, my girlfriend Cena was watching uh, Warrior the other day. She loves Tom Hardy. Wish I never would have shown her Tom Hardy. <laughs> That's her husband. Uh, so she was watching her husband, Tom Hardy and Warrior. And then she's like, oh, look, it's Denzel. <laughs> so she messaged you on Instagram. She's like, hey, I just saw you. <laughs> oh my God. She, totally, totally she, she was all excited for you. Um, I was like, yeah, dude, stay's working. Um, but uh, I was going to ask you about the RZA movie that you did mm -hmm. with RZA, um, yeah. which is called. That's the yeah, I, was, I was about to say that Cutthroat City. Got it. Mm -hmm. Cutthroat City. <laughs> um, there you go. Is there any news on when that is coming out? Because I know they had to postpone the release of that. Oh man, I, I don't, I don't know because right yeah. before you know COVID madness, yep. uh, um, we were set to go to South by Southwest. Right. And oh, I remember, wow. what was it? The day South by Southwest got uh, canceled. I remember I jumped instantly on the phone and I was like calling the airlines and people were scrambling. And, you know, obviously, yep. it, it, I think literally only a couple days later, that's when we kind of went on. A week later, we went on lockdown. Hmm. Um, and the film was supposed to come yeah. out April 10th for, you know, dish, uh, for a theatrical release. And that has got shelved and pushed back. So I don't, I don't know, to be honest with you. I don't know what the current yeah. uh, status of the film is. I don't know if maybe they're even thinking about VOD at this point. Uh, yeah. It's hard to say. Yeah. yeah. We'll wait and see. I'm, I'm excited to see it either way, whatever they choose to do with it. Man, yeah. I'm excited. It's been two years. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. We filmed that project. <clears throat> we filmed that project November, or what was it? December 2017. Oh, wow, it was supposed to come out this year. Wow, I mean, I know wow. post production takes a long time, but that's long. And then on top of this, you got COVID. Post production, COVID. It's still an independent film at the end of the day. Yeah. Um. So you know, finding distribution, uh, finding you know how it works, producers, yeah. different things like that. There's so many, again, so many extremities that are out of our control. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. So many headaches I, you got to put up with on the back yeah. end. So, yeah, no, it's it was an interesting uh, process, and I'm only privy to, you know, a small amount of the stuff that they had to go through. So once we finally got it in theaters and it was ready to come out, I was like, ah, yeah, cool. You know, <laughs> we get to see it. You know, we get to share yeah. this with the world. Yeah. And then COVID hit. <laughs> and then yeah. COVID hit. Yeah. And then COVID. <laughs> Oh, Isaiah Washington's in that too. We uh, we were gonna work on a project with him oh, nice. uh, af after he did that uh, sniper movie about the uh, DC sniper. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Blue yeah that, yes, that was actually yeah, we went yeah, to the yeah. we went to the premiere of that with him because um, he was work he was supposed to be on a project that my producer friends were working with him, uh, and that actually that movie came out really well. Blue Caprice was done really well. I haven't seen it. I heard nothing but great things about it. Yeah, Isaiah, he's a, he's a powerful actor, man. He's he's an interesting one to work with. Funny well, I didn't know. I didn't really. Personality. Yeah, he's very eccentric. Yeah, um, <laughs> which is interesting because when he was supposed to work on the project with us, he wanted uh, producer credit as well, um, mm -hmm. because you know sometimes you're acting, sometimes you're producing, sometimes you're directing. So he wanted you know actor credit, producer credit, so that he can build up that producer resume, which is smart. Absolutely. Yeah. No, that's, yeah. that's what he's gotta I get it i don't see why uh more actors i think more it. actors are starting to do it now you know? mm -hmm. I'm yeah they are. look to uh the mentors that i have admired you know uh in the positions that came before us and i always wonder why they didn't do more and i think we're starting to see more uh actors starting to empower themselves and take on different positions which is yeah cool. mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Uh, I think that's all I've got right now in here. I'm waiting for uh, Tribeca to see if we get that Tribeca X award, bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same. Fingers crossed, guys. Where, where does luck. that come from? You, you texted me that yesterday, bro. Uh, bro. Uh, <laughs> it comes from say, Mr. Grubzner. <laughs> I just always say bro and bro. bro. Uh, yeah, it's bro. more of a, yeah. it's a European thing. English thing, okay. I say bro. And... It's English. 
instead of pork bro, and beans. I'm, I'm and... so I get so I don't like the usual people. Bro, hey bro, bro, what are you doing, bro? Yeah, yeah. I hate it. Yeah, that's so funny. <laughs> Say, where did that go? You texted me that day, bro. What? <laughs> are, are these typos or is this a real thing? Why, <laughs> why the hell it was a typo? I'm really good. Why the hell does Nick keep calling me, bro? Does he like yeah. to drink? Jeez. Do I need to call 5150 or what? What's going on? <laughs> 5150. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, um, Cody's working on a script, too. Yeah, yeah. it's actually. Oh, kind of similar to uh, your idea. It's like a dark psychological thriller. It right. happens actually at a mental institute. Um, it's basically uh, dealing with your inner demons. Everyone has like their inner demons that they're trying to, to work on. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this character actually literally is facing his uh, demon, which is basically a shadow in a sense. Mm. So. Um, yeah, I'm right now. I'm kind of working on like the first little episode. I'm thinking of making a little uh, episodic type thing, like maybe 40, 50 minutes, somewhere around there mm -hmm. for each episode. So not under ten minutes. It, it so, won't pass for Quibi. <laughs> so Quibi, <laughs> Quibi won't okay, yeah, exactly, use it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Can, can you film it vertical? I'll have film it. <laughs> yeah gonna be diagonal so it's <laughs> what the heck halfway in between <laughs> yeah my neck oh right. stupid just mid turn it freezes oh yeah, man that's, that's amazing though that's uh what what inspired you to that and then what have you been watching inspiration wise um you know this this idea i've had for oh god i don't know probably like 10 years I would mm -hmm. say um, and it's just been in the back of my mind just kind of marinating and I'm like you know what I gotta I gotta start writing something down so um, eventually started writing and then my computer did something weird hey. and completely deleted everything I was like 45 pages into it deleted everything so I'm back to mm. kind of square one um, correct but yeah <laughs> use the cloud use the cloud i know i know uh references i've been going a little back and forth i mean definitely like uh shining uh, mm -hmm. definitely um i actually been doing a lot of research like on youtube just like looking at different um patients as far as like schizophrenia bipolar and just kind of seeing like how they are and how just like mm. the way they they respond and things and mm. how just sometimes they're just completely just like monotone but they're talking about how they killed someone or so, just random things it's just it's it's uh pretty mm. crazy pretty intense that's good research yeah just yeah, um, trying to heart. get some different yeah just some Dead, random Dead things. like okay okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, mm. I mean, I definitely, yeah, I definitely recommend if you have, yeah, go on YouTube, just type in a couple, of, yeah, like schizophrenia, just kind of, or bipolar things, and they, they, you get a, some pretty good uh, videos up there, like some from like maybe in the 50s, 60s of the patients, and they're like doing interviews with them, and they're just so just like, it's very eerie. Just because like mm -hmm. the way they're talking, they're still very polite and very just like, but like what they're saying and they're just they're describing things. You're just like, oh my gosh, that's just just brings a completely different feel and vibe. My buddy, um, <laughs> I've heard that before. <laughs> we'll cut it out. <laughs> my buddy in LA um, owns a production um, equipment company, mm -hmm. uh, Standard Camera. Standard Camera, yeah, Standard Camera and he's in the valley he uh he they have ari alexa minis they have he has a cook lenses a whole bunch of equipment mm -hmm. actually when i was visiting when i was out there in november we went to his uh his warehouse and i was sitting there just looking at all his equipment i'm like god damn it <laughs> i just want to film something <laughs> i know <laughs> what what's your uh, you're cutting this part out right yes yeah yeah this is, this is a bit off yeah. record 
What, what's your buddy's name? Maybe. No, it's good. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, it's all. <laughs> Depends on how good it is. <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, Nick Gall. Nick Gall. No. Okay, I thought he was a. Uh, that's funny. He he reminded me of somebody else that I thought I knew. Never mind. Yeah. All standard right, standardcamera.com. Yeah, we'll cut it out. I'm just <laughs> 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 <laughs>